The persecution of Christians is on the rise. And folks, in this country, it's going to get worse and worse. All right, folks, let's get into this. I have to tell you, this article is yet one of many, many, many more like it. And I'm saying that these articles are on the rise because this is happening literally everywhere. It's happening in schools. It's happening in the military. It's happening in the private sector. It's happening everywhere you can imagine. The persecution of Christians is on the rise. And by the way, this is something that Zechariah told us we should be expecting. We learn of this in Zechariah 12. We learn of it in Zechariah 14. And of course, it's all over the Bible. We know that when we choose to live righteously, we will suffer persecution. The Bible makes that very clear. And of course, we are watching all of this begin to materialize in ways we never thought, especially in the United States of America. But folks, we shouldn't be surprised because as I said before, we are in the last days and we are getting closer and closer to that time and I can say whether or not that time is 10 years away, 10 days away, 20 weeks away or 20 years away, I can God forbid 20 years away. I can say that Christ can come at any moment and I can also say that the persecution that we are experiencing is on the rise. We should not be surprised by it. As I've said before, I'll say it again. We should not be surprised by it. I've said it before. I'll say it again. We should not be surprised by it. <laughs> so let's get into this. Watch this. It says this. Here's the article. The title of the article is Holy War Erupts as National Guard Officer Booted from Command for Voicing Christian Beliefs. Folks, this is absolutely unbelievable. Let me read this article to you. It says, Liberty Council has announced it is bringing a free speech fight to the Idaho Army National Guard demanding the organization restore the career of an infantry officer who was removed from command and illegally pressured to resign because of a soldier's complaints about the officer's statements regarding his personal Christian beliefs. Guys, the operative terminology here is personal Christian beliefs. Pay attention to that, folks. It goes on to say the statements were made as the officer explained on his private social media. Folks, we're talking private social media. We're not talking about while he's at work. We're not talking about in the uh, 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 sort of uh, throughout the commission of his responsibilities. We're not talking about him having a conversation while he's on duty. This is his private social media. Okay, I want I want that to compute for just a second. Let me start the sentence again. The statements were made as the officer explained on his private social media, his perspectives on gender ideology and the sexualization of children. The officer argued against graphic and obscene children's books in a library, drag events in libraries and schools, and said no child is born in the wrong body. And by the way, that's true. That's an absolutely biblical perspective. Never is it okay for us to allow our children to be subject to all of this nonsense that they're being subject to. Folks, this is the reason why my children are in homeschool. This is the reason why I will never allow my children to step foot in a public school so long as I live or their mother lives because the reality of it is the public schools are exploitation centers. They are literal boot camps in order to completely brainwash our children to accept things that God never intended for them to experience, accept, or be uh, subject to. And this is the kind of nonsense that we're seeing on the rise. And folks, I'm going to say this. The type of things that children used to be exploited to back in the day would land a teacher in jail in a heartbeat. Now these teachers are being celebrated for the exploitation of children. Now they're being celebrated for this insane amount of sexualization and literal exploitation of children, and it is not right. And this man being a believer, just like I'm a believer, this person walking with the Lord, the same way I'm walking with the Lord, felt the need to express his view concerning these situations. And it's not just his view, it's God's view. It is our religious freedom. And by the way, I think it's really important. I think it's really important for us to speak up about these things. And I also think it's important that we not disparage people around us who have a different perspective. They have a different point of view because the God of this world, Satan, has blinded them. And the reality of it is every single time they walk in that darkness and blindness, we have an obligation to tell them about the only solution that can pull them out of that arena and we should not be penalized for doing so. 
We cannot hate people. As a matter of fact, it is our love for people that constrains us to tell them the truth about these things. The next sentence says he also objected to the medical mutilation of gender-confused children. And by the way, I object to that too. How many children throughout the tenure of their time in their childhood have had confusion about gender? How many times have you heard stories of young men wanting to put on a dress out of curiosity or anything like that? Look, the reality of it is if you cannot entrust a child to put a bottle of alcohol to their lips until they're 21, how in the world are you going to entrust them or counsel them to literally change their gender? It doesn't even make sense. It's completely insane. Folks, did you know that in absolutely every state of the union, with the exception of one, if I remember correctly, and I'd have to go look it up, you cannot even enter into a contractual agreement with somebody who is 18 years or younger. Matter of fact, if you were to sell a car, you're a car salesman, and you were to sell a car to an 18-year-old, uh, or somebody who's under 18 and they signed the contract and paid you, they would be able to get their money back and still keep the car because the contractual agreement that you entered into with them was actually illegal. You can't do it. Why? Because the prevalent thinking is when you are a certain age, your ability to be able to reason with some uh, semblance of understanding, discernment, wisdom, capacity is very limited. And that's a true statement. You don't understand the full implications of the permanent decisions that you make. This is why you can't even get a tattoo unless you're drinking age. That's how crazy this is. But yet we're going to have no problem allowing a children to become mutilated. It doesn't make sense. It's absolutely insane. The article goes on to say the comments upset a subordinate senior enlisted man who promptly complained about being offended. He goes on to say this, quote, I feel like I have been discriminated against because of my sexual orientation and that is or that has caused a hostile work environment. The purpose of this complaint is to bring to your attention several instances in which I believe I have faced discriminatory treatment based on my sexual orientation. I am deeply concerned about the hostile and prejudiced behavior I have experienced, which has adversely affected my well-being, work performance, and overall sense of belonging within the workplace organization. Uh, by the way, uh, this is something that an attorney has written up, and if it's true, then it should not be the case, right? If somebody is gay or not gay, somebody is walking with the Lord or not walking with the Lord, you should never be hostile to those people, right? The only time that I would support any level of hostility is when you're defending yourself and they are actually attacking you. And in reality, God does not want us to be the type of people that function in a hostile way towards other people that disagree with us. That's not something that he intended for us to do. So I can understand why it would be a legitimate complaint to say that you're being treated hostily, but how are you being being discriminated against when somebody chooses to express their religious point of view. And I have to say this, this is a very, very ugly thing to point out, but it's true. So many people in these communities are going out of their way to claim some level of discrimination so that they have some sort of semblance of standing to be able to shut down the voice of Christians. And based on what we know from the case, this man never said anything to anybody other than his personal expressions of opinion that were uh, based in his personal or private social media account. This is crazy. The article goes on to say the subordinate who claims to be homosexual prompted the National Guard's negative actions against the officer, Liberty Council said. The Liberty Council's first intervention in the case has been to notify Governor Brad Little of the free speech violations. This is the quote from the legal team. It says, in this instance, the Idaho Army National Guard has violated the First Amendment Religious Freedom Restoration Act, the Idaho Constitution, and the Free Exercise of Religious Protection Act. In addition, it has become evident that this military branch seeks to implement a policy of discrimination against the religious beliefs of enlisted personnel. Yeah, and by the way, folks, that is a cookie-cutter statement about what's going on in the United States military as a whole. It's a cookie-cutter statement of what's happening all over. And yes, it is a violation of the First Amendment as well. So it's interesting to point all of this out. It's a very real situation that's really happening, and it's something that we should expect. The article goes on to say the solution, it said, is for, quote, Idaho Army National Guard must, 
unsubstantiate the discriminatory investigating officer's findings and recommendations, reject the discriminatory policy regarding religious speech, dismiss the frivolous subordinate senior enlisted man's complaint, and restore the officer's career. And that is actually reasonable. The article goes on to say the subordinate's complaint also said, and this is the, the quote, I must emphasize that this has created an uncomfortable, unsafe, and hostile work environment, making it increasingly challenge, challenging for me to perform my duties effectively. With the active ties to the extremist hate group, it makes me feel threatened and unsafe. All the posts on his social media and how public he is about his hate towards individuals like me and my family, not just for me, but for my husband and my child. Folks, I want to make myself very, very clear. This is cookie cutter language. This is the language that you are seeing on every single complaint that's being voiced all over the place because this is the language that they find is the most effective. And in reality, I can tell you so much of this stuff is founded in a bunch of lies. They redefine the term hate. They say that you are filled with hate if you disagree with the lifestyle that they're living. They say that you are filled with hate if you choose to not be given to the mental illness that causes them to believe the way that they believe concerning who they think they are. And the reality of it is you are fully entitled to believe anything you want to believe. You are fully entitled to live any way you want to live. And you are absolutely entitled for you to live that way freely without being harmed or bothered or disturbed by anybody else. I literally hate the idea that you would disrupt the life of somebody who just simply wants to live life the way that they want to live their life. What I also hate is the fact that they could suffer immense repercussions for doing that. They could suffer repercussions with respect to their judgment by God and all the other things that are going on, but I also am full, full of, let me just simply say, disappointment and anger and dissatisfaction with the mindset that says that I cannot express my point of view. If I cannot express my point of view, then what in the world? I, and by the way, forget, it. I'm not even concerned about my point of view. I'm concerned about God's point of view. So if you're going to penalize me for sharing what I absolutely believe God has called me to share, we have a bigger problem here. And everything that I'm sharing here, what I share on YouTube, the things that I share in my life, look, I'm a pastor. I'm sharing what I believe God Almighty wants me to share. And one of the things that I don't share in is the view that we should treat people disparagingly because of a contrary point of view that they have. But the one thing that I will not allow is I will not allow you to tell me that I cannot protect my children based on your claim that it's disparaging for me to actually stop you from seeking to brainwash my child. If you have the freedom to live the way that you want to live, that's fine so long as it does not create the imposition of that lifestyle or that decision or that delusion to exist within my own child. That is a right that we all have. That is something that can be substantiated very clearly and freely, not only within the Constitution of the United States, but undoubtedly within the Word of God. God honors people's free will so much that he will allow them to take themselves to hell over it. That's a pretty heavy honoring. That's a pretty heavy freedom. It's a funny thing about freedom, folks. It's the two-edged sword that exists with freedom. That when you allow freedom to do what freedom is supposed to do, that freedom can also become a freedom to allow you to cut into bondage, which would then bring for yourself pain and suffering. You have the freedom to jump off a building. But if you do, there would be a great consequence. And God forbid that you would ever do that. We would never want you to jump off of a building. But if you feel like it's your freedom to do something like that, which we would never want you to do it, even would try to prevent you from doing it. You could hurt yourself. That's the consequence of freedom. It's really sad because now what they're doing is they're trying to shut people's mouths in the name of some type of freedom, when in reality what it is is bondage. And this is something that I keep talking about. I say it again and again and again and again. We are being faced with the same issues. It is the same level of brevity. It's the same significant matters. It's the same thing, folks. We are talking about it again and again and again and again, and it continues to be ugly. But the reality of it is we are called by God to stand up for righteousness and boldness and praise God for this person that is doing exactly that. Look what this goes on to say. It says, the legal team explained, as a Christian, the officer, quote, believes all people are made in God's image and have inherent dignity and are worthy of respect. He committed to serving those under his command, regardless of political or religious disagreements, and would give his life in defense of his state and nation. Sounds like something I would say. I think that's a completely Christian perspective. I think that's a righteous perspective. 
The article goes on to say the National Guard removed him from command because of the feelings of offense expressed by a subordinate. Think about this, folks. If somebody is offended by you, that's enough for them to remove you from your office? That's crazy. It's insane. And the United States military has no business doing anything like that. It goes on to say, then officials pressured him to quit and shortly after launched a formal investigation based on the unconstitutional complaint. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Look what it goes on to say. And this is such a terrible, this is so terrible. Listen to what it says. It took a year, but that resulted in a recommendation he be permanently barred from command. Further, the investigating officer revealed his perspective of enlisted personnel, here's the quote, who hold traditional moral values are extremists. You get that, folks? That's the direction that the world is going in right now. That is the direction that our world is continuing to communicate that if you are a Christian, you are an extremist, and you are the type of extremist that is dangerous to the rest of society. That is what they're claiming, folks, and that's what this comes down to. They are desiring to set a precedent that drives all of this in that direction, and nothing could be more evil. This is dark, folks. This is super dark. Liberty Council founder and chairman Matt Staver said, and this is his quote, Governor Brad Little must ensure that the Idaho Army National Guard uphold federal and state law and protect the free speech of enlisted personnel. This discrimination against an officer based on a frivolous complaint must be addressed and his record cleared and career restored. The names of the case participants were not immediately released. Folks, I want to just make myself very, very clear because this is really, really important. The kind of thing that we are watching right now is on the increase. We are going to see it happen again and again and again and again. And more than ever, my dear brothers and sisters, this is the time to stand up. This is the time to make a case for speaking the truth concerning the things that we know are going to be happening and the things that are on the rise. Folks, it's getting darker out there. It's getting darker. And what we need to understand, because the Bible told us this, that those who will live righteously, those who will walk with Christ, are going to suffer persecution. That's what the Bible says. It tells us that. But we cannot allow that to be the thing that causes us to shy away from telling the truth. Rather, what it should be is it should be the source of inspiration to continue to stand for the truth. Why? Because we will be rewarded. We will be rewarded for standing for righteousness. And more than ever, what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to speak the truth in love. Folks, I want to read a passage to you that I've been reading a lot of lately. And I read it again and again and again because it is such a powerful text. And so much of what is said, all of what is said, is extraordinarily valuable for the time that which, in which we're living today. Look what it says. This is 2 Timothy chapter 3. I'm going to read just the first few verses and then I'm going to skip down because this is really important. He says, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of them own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Look what he goes on to say, because this is such a heavy thing, and it's something that I just quoted to you. This is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. He says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But look at the exhortation that he gives. This is heavy. He says, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And Timothy, of course, being one who learned this as a child, Paul goes on to say this. He says, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. And look what he says, folks. This is so powerful. And this is what me and you need to take to heart. He says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That what? That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works pretty heavy. Folks, we need to dig deeply into the Word of God. In every situation and circumstance that life presents, we need to go to God's Word. We need to seek God's Word. We need to aggressively pursue God's Word. Why? Because more than ever, we need God's Word. 
We need his insight. We need his direction. We need his wisdom. We need to learn and better develop and become aware of all the things that God is doing in our lives and in our hearts. And folks, we have to wake up. We have to wake up. More than ever, I want to encourage you, embrace the word of God. Hold fast to the word of God. Seek the word of God in everything that you do because it's the only source of life you'll ever be able to find. We're in a critical time right now in this world. Lean in on the word of God. We have hope. One more statement. It's the most exciting time to be living for the Lord. Folks, I'm telling you, it's the most exciting time to be alive for Christ. Let's get on it, folks. It's good stuff. God is faithful. And let's keep seeking him. He's doing a great work. Let's not lose sight of the thing that he wants to do in our lives day in and day out. God bless you.